So for today's lecture, I've got a copy of my work with today's date and then the one from Tuesday. We've got some things that I want to accomplish with today's project. So if we open up the, the mobile site folder inside of the project folder, we've got the CSS file, which will be the file where we define the colors and the, and the look and feel aspects of the design of our project. We've got the JS file, the JavaScript file, which will have the, the JavaScript, the code, the logic, the interactivity of it all. And we've got the HTML, which is basically the structure, the different screens of our app. We're going to edit the index file, so go ahead and right-click it. Select Edit with Notepad++. Let's open up the index file inside of Notepad++. You may get a, a notification for Notepad update, just cancel it. And uh, to remind ourselves what the project looks like, I'm going to load it up in the web browser just to remind myself. So I'm going to run it in Firefox. You might want to remember that keyboard shortcut if you're going to be launching Firefox often. And it might be more keyboard combinations that you, than you've ever done before. You might be used to Control S or Control P or Control Q, but this is Control Alt Shift X and it loads Firefox. If you want it in Chrome, you can launch in Chrome and that's Alt Control Shift R and it loads up in the browser of your choice. So briefly looking at it to remind myself, thank you, to remind myself what the project is. Home screen, art screen, computer screen, this collapse of uh, this uh, list view widget doesn't work yet. Hasn't, we haven't worked on it yet. On art screen, there's no content inside of these yet. And the home screen is also a bit barren. But we've got the screenfuls of content. The screenfuls for our app. And recall that that is using a section HTML tag with data role of page and an ID. Before we go too much further, what I want to do is fix something that is uh, evident here. Uh, we worked with Kodika.com to create the project with their drag and drop editor. And it was not the latest version of the editor. It was the free secret version that we used in order to create our project. Um, and in a sense, it's a bit of a legacy software at the moment. So they really want you to either get the seven-day trial or get the $79 license for the full Kodika. Because if we look at lines 12, 18, and 19, these are references to older versions of jQuery and jQuery Mobile. So what we're going to do is use the latest versions of those supporting uh, libraries so that our app is using the latest technology, the latest code. The way we're going to do this is we're going to have local versions of them. What we've got here are, remember, CDNs. These are online versions of these files. At cloudfront.net, we've got jQuery Mobile 1.3.1. And also on cloudfront.net, we've got jQuery 1.9.1. You might have noticed that when, if you launched this in, in Firefox, it might have felt that it, take, that it took maybe two seconds to load three seconds to load and then it was visible and it's fine and now subsequent times that we load it uh, it'll be fast half a second one second because we had to the first time connect to the servers to download the supporting files and then display the work the project and then it worked I want to have local copies of these files I want copies of these files right in my mobile website project folder that way there's going to be no wait, basically, for the project to load. All of the files will be together. Later on, when we package this as an app, all the files will be together. Therefore, the, again, the project will be more responsive. And then also, we will not be beholden to internet outages. If I, my network went down and I didn't have an internet connection, 
I would not be able to load those supporting files and my app would look terrible. It would look black and white, no colors, basic fonts, because we're not loading these very important supporting libraries. So we're going to take a moment to download the supporting files and set them up. So let's go to our web browser. And let's go first to the website jQuery.com. J-Q-U-E-R-Y, jQuery.com. Now jQuery Mobile is a library built on top of jQuery, which in a sense is a library built on top of JavaScript. All three of those are JavaScript. jQuery Mobile, jQuery, and that all is JavaScript. The tagline of jQuery is write less, do more. Later on this will be more evident, where we can write a simple eight character command in jQuery, which is then translated to a 28 character command in plain JavaScript. So we write shorter commands because we use the jQuery library to accomplish more things. In a sense, that's what is also happening in our project when we have data role equals page. <coughs> that only makes sense because we've got jQuery mobile. If we don't have jQuery mobile, data role is ignored and our project looks basic. So the data role is shorthand that is packaged basically in jQuery mobile. If we didn't have jQuery mobile, we would have to spend a lot of time ourselves to write a lot of CSS to get the document to look like how it currently looks. So um, we need to download the jQuery library. Uh, on the top right, you should see a big old button that says download jQuery, either version 1.11 or 2.1. So go ahead and click on download jQuery. We have the 1.x branch and the 1 and the 2.x branch. Well, which one do we want? This one says, um, we, somewhere here says, uh, jQuery 2 has the same API, the same code as jQuery 1, but does not support Internet Explorer 6, 7, or 8. Guess what? We're not going to target Internet Explorers 6, 7, or 8. We, if we have a web app, okay, those people will be out of luck, but I'm not too concerned with that. Eventually, we are going for an Android app, which Internet Explorer 6, 7, and 8 does not exist anywhere online. It's a web browser for a computer. So what I'm going to say is we're going to use the jQuery 2x branch. Um, if you want full compatibility with older browsers and such, then you would stick with the 1x branch. I, I don't quite care about the older compatibility, so we're going with 2. We have a few options. Download the compressed production version. Download the uncompressed development version and some other things. Um, we want the compressed production version. That one is the version of the library that has all of the extra space stripped out. It's, it's a leaner file. It's only, let's say, 10 kilobytes instead of 100 kilobytes. Because those spaces and those tabs and those comments take up space in a file. And we don't really need the spaces and the tabs and the comments in the development version, we're never going to need to open the jQuery file. We just need to use it. So we're going to use the compressed version, which is uh, going to make our project faster. I'm in Firefox, and if I click on download the compressed production version, it shows me the code. Oops, I don't want that. How do you download this? Let's right-click the link and select Save Link As. So if you've got a big wall of code, we don't want that. We want to download the file. So on the compressed version, in the 2x branch, right-click Save Link As. 
it's going to then hopefully prompt you to save jQuery dash two point one point four point min point js. The point min is what's letting you know this is the minified version. This is the compressed version, the smaller, sleeker version of the code. So if it's asking you to save it, make sure you save it in your project folder. Mine is in computer, my flash drive, my project folder, my mobile website folder. So save this JS file into your project folder. Don't change the name. Click Save. So now if I look in my folder, I've got my three original files and my new jQuery JavaScript file. Did everyone manage to get that? Okay, just because it's in the folder doesn't mean we're actually even using it. It's just in the folder. We need to go back to Notepad and edit a little code. Let's go back to Notepad and into line 18. This is a reference to jQuery 1.9.1 on the server. We're going to change that where it says source equals, etc. We're going to delete the part, everything except for the file. We're going to delete HTTP blah 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 cloudfront.net and leave the part that says jQuery.js. So that's line 18. Change it so that it just points to jQuery 1.9.1. And then obviously because now this is pointing to a local file, since it no longer has the HTTP part, it says, okay, there must be a local file within this folder called jQuery191, which there is not. We've got a local file called what? jQuery214.min.js. So let's uh, s fix line 18 so that it's 2.1.4. So there's my updated line 18, where it's pointing to the latest version of the code as a local version in my project. Just to make sure we've got this right, save it and run it. Your project should look exactly the same, function exactly the same. Yep, looks good. If you made a mistake, it might look something like this. That's what I'm saying. What if we didn't have an internet connection? We weren't able to connect to certain files, it would look terrible. So if it looks like that, what you might have done is maybe you did not save your jQuery file to the same <coughs> folder as your project, or you might have misspelled the code there. Okay, we're going to do something similar for jQuery Mobile. It's a little more involved. I'll walk you through it. jQuery is just one file, a JavaScript file that we never need to edit. We just need to use it. Very similar to J jQuery Mobile, but it's actually two files. Notice line 12 points to a CSS file. That's the colors, the gradients, the shadows, the alignment of things. And then we've got the JS file, which is basically what translates data role equals page into something that's 40 lines long to make our project look like that. That needs to be updated too. Let's go back to the web browser. If you've still got the jQuery site open, at the very top we've got the jQuery project here and the jQuery mobile project there. If you close your jQuery, if you closed your jQuery um, 
website, then just go to jQueryMobile.com. So let's go to jQueryMobile.com, and then you'll also see on the right side, download jQuery Mobile, latest stable version. So click on latest stable. <coughs> In my case, because I'm in Firefox, it pops up. What would you like to do with this? And notice it's a zip file. This actually comes with a bunch of files. I'll tell you which are the important ones in a moment. But I've selected latest stable here on the right side, and I'm going to either or will work, but I'm going to select to open it. This will download it and open it. We don't need to extract the whole project. I'll tell you which files we need. So let it download. <coughs> let it download and you can open the zip file. So once you download the zip file, these are the three files that we need. Inside of it, we've got a bunch of things we're going to use near the bottom. jQuery Mobile 145 min CSS and jQuery Mobile 145 min JS. And the very first folder, images. That's where all of the images appear when we say when we say data icon equals user, it's in that folder. So what I want to do is I want to take those three files and I want to copy them over from the zip file into my project. So the jQuery Mobile min JS, the jQuery Mobile min CSS, and the images folder. The whole thing, just copy them over from the zip file that you just downloaded into your project folder. You can ignore the other files. What was the, um, on the site? Mm -hmm. Okay, on the second one, when I went back in to the site, I'm downloading the... the um, so did you already download jQuery? Yes. Okay. Then at the top, click on that third icon, that's jQuery Mobile. So now on this screen here, you're going to click on Latest Stable. So that downloads, when that finishes downloading down there, you're going to click it to open it, and you're going to take those three files into your project. Right. Did everyone get those? Does anyone need some help? Thank you. 
downloading four more seconds. Oh, okay. And then look at the download time? Well, it'll show it right here. It'll say open. Oh, see that? <laughs> All right, so copy those three files that I have highlighted into your project. Okay. All right, so... These three files, we, uh, we need to copy them from your downloaded jQuery mobile zip file. And again, the purpose of this is to have local copies of the files. That, are, that way your app, that way your website is not reliant on an internet connection. Because later when we get to actually make the app, you might want to create a completely offline app so that it's not necessary to have a, a connection. If we don't do this, we have a big hindrance. So I copy those to the project folder and I've got the, to then edit my, my code. So line 12, very similar to what I did before. Line 12, I'm going to remove everything there except the file itself, jQuery Mobile CSS. So we're going to go ahead then and simplify that just to the file name. And then, of course, we just downloaded what? Version 1.1.5. So now this is the file we're referencing, and we'll have to do the same thing online, uh, whatever that one is down there, after jQuery. We'll have to do that as well. So make sure those three lines there now are pointing to your local versions. Lines 12, 18, and 19. So you want to then save these changes and run the project. And the project should actually look slightly different than before. The color scheme changed. 
it's not the same, if I go back here, it's not that same old version. That was the old color scheme. The new color scheme looks like that. Also, the icon that was missing is no longer missing. Remember here, I changed art to data, role equal, uh, data icon equals user. But with jQuery Mobile version 1.3, it didn't have that icon. jQuery Mobile 1.4 has the icon. There it is. Question. I can't get that. Okay, just one moment. So make sure your project looks something like that. This is J. Oh no. Oh yes. Uh, you, you put this one as one four five. Mm -hmm. This one also needs to be one four five. Okay. Let's try this. Oh, 
All right, everyone, let's go on now. So at this point, what you should have is your project set up like this. You should have the supporting files of jQuery. Okay, everyone. You should have the supporting files of the project like this. In this way, now, uh, you're not reliant on an internet connection. Now, if you do notice something here, we do have... Uh, line 22, a connection over to kodika.extra.js on their server. Even though, on, even though in our project fo folder here, we've got kodika.extra.js. The copy that we have is empty. The copy that they have on their server, I was going to take a quick look at it, they've got some sort of built-in um, stuff happening there. Uh, I'm not quite sure what it does. So what we're going to do is point our <coughs> reference here on line 22. I'm going to point this reference over to our, our existing one in the folder. So line 22, we're going to change that so that it simply just says kodika.extra.ext.js. Let's fix that, line 22. So if you take a quick look in your browser, again, it should not uh, break. It should look something like that. OK, so I want to work with adding some content on these different screens. I want to get uh, pictures and some text. Uh, I want to start to populate the project with a little bit of content and then continue to work with some of the elements that are still missing like the pop-up screen and the um, the extra class screens and, and so forth. So. Um, I want to have a picture here on the home screen, but I, uh, I don't have one handy. So let me show you a website where you can get pictures. Obviously, you can do a search. You can go to your favorite web, your, your favorite search engine, and search for, you know, student pictures. And you're, you'll get, in this case, for example, 350 million results. I'm going to say, and if you take my other classes, I'm going to say, do not use any picture you find on the internet. Short answer. Longer answer. You don't want to use any of these pictures because you don't know its copyright status. You don't know its licensing, licensing status. You don't know if it's okay for you to use the picture. Just because you can easily find a picture, right-click and save, does not mean you can use it. Just like you can walk into a store and look, this uh, Coke is on the floor, let me walk out with it. Same sort of thing with digital images. Just because you can take it doesn't mean you can take it. So I'm going to show you instead a couple of websites where you can go to to get legal images. Images that have been made public for you to use for any purpose you want. We don't know if these are for that purpose. It's better to assume that no. Just because you can find any image on a Google search, on a Yahoo search, does not mean you can use it unless you know what you're looking for. One of the sites that I recommend Let's go to P-I-X-A-B-A-Y dot com, Pixabay, P-I-X-A-B-A-Y dot com, Pixabay dot com. Pixabay dot com is about free, high-quality images you can use anywhere. Because maybe you do a regular search, you find a picture, and then it says, free for non-commercial use. So perhaps we could do that in our we could use that picture in our app no problem. But if you then try to reuse that same picture for your app that you're selling or you have in-app purchases, suddenly your project is for a commercial use and you've run afoul of the license of that other picture. Pixabay here 
has a much more liberal license in that you can use these pictures here for anything you want. You're not going to find 350 million pictures of students, but you're going to find pictures that are okay for you to use. So let's see what we get with student. Ignore the first row, those are the sponsored ones. I get 517 images, again, not the same as, as a Google image, but hopefully you'll get the right picture. Like one of these ones, students studying, books. So you can search for a picture of student or education or whatever you'd like. Let's say you find a picture that you like, so you want to click on it, and then on the right side it'll tell you uh, this is the, uh, the user that uploaded it. They've also got 568 images, and these are the different sizes. So they give you uh, web versions, uh, low quality versions, even high quality extra large versions, great for print. So if you need a really high quality version of many of these pictures, they're available here. Uh, we, we should be fine with either medium or large sized. Uh, these, if we go with a larger size, we will be able to cover the range of devices. If you've got a tablet or a, or a regular sized phone, uh, high quality screen or not, if you get a larger quality version, it'll grow and shrink to the right size. But you don't need the extra large version. That's overkill. That's way too high quality for the project. So either medium or large will work. I'm going to go with medium, and notice there's a free download button. I'm going to click free download. I might have to confirm a CAPTCHA. And I'm going to save that into my project folder. I'm going to save that image into my project folder. Uh, and I've already got a folder waiting for me, <clears throat> an images folder. You should have that images folder from when you copied it from the jQuery mobile zip file. So I just downloaded this picture of a library, whatever you'd like for your project. This is how you're going to customize yours. So I'm going to uh, download that and put it into the images folder of my project. Question? Let me help you in just one moment. Let me mention one more website because what we're going to do is I'm going to mention a couple of websites and then you're going to download five pictures. Once I show you this other site, you're going to download five pictures and save them into your project and we'll go on in a moment. The other site that I'm going to mention that is useful to find these types of images. Notice this says this is a public domain image. This is an image that's been given out free for the world, free to the world to use for any purpose. So public domain images are okay for you to use. Another keyword is um, stock images. Stock images is another kind of image that is okay for you to use, although you'll have to read the license because there might be requirements such as this, this image is okay to use for any purpose except commercial purposes. Public domain images are like the most free thing of all. You can use it for any purpose at all. That's why I'm showing you Pixabay. The other website that I'll mention is over at wikimedia.org, not Wikipedia, wikimedia.org. 
Wikipedia is part of this organization of wikis, which are user-generated content. And at wikimedia.org, we can go to Wikipedia, we can look up quotes, we can look up books, or if we go to the Wikimedia Commons, we can look up images. Images that are oftentimes public domain, stock images, images that are free for you to use. So go to wikimedia.org and then click on Wikimedia Commons. Here you'll have some pictures and search. So I'm going to search here, student. Uh, you might have different categories. Right, so on those two websites, on those two websites, um, take a moment to find five images, download them to your project, and then we'll start to add them to our project in just a moment. So those are the two websites I recommend. No, it was at pixabay.com. So let's go to the website pixabay.com. Not, not right there, that's a search. The address box. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is the one I recommend. This is the place where you. This is the this is the website where you can then search for so any, any images. What made you sign and to see the picture? Well, what kind of picture are you looking for? Okay, so. Okay. So on this screen is where you can find the pictures. Okay. This is one of them. On the other spot, just find here, and then you also search there. So those are the two sites. Go ahead and find five pictures and save them. Do you want? Okay, thank you. Oh, there was a question too. Oh, it, it, oh, there was just, but then the other one, when I tried to do that, yes, now it says error. Well, let's go back to it so we can see what the error was. Okay, so then uh, let's wait for it a little bit more, and if it, if it then does download, we're, we're good. For some reason, it might have been a network failure, and again, unfortunately, our network has been really bad in the last six months, so hopefully they work on it.
So I downloaded a couple of these pictures. You should download up to five. I'm going to move on. If you haven't gotten all five of them, that's okay. We're coming to a break soon. But I've got a couple of pictures that I've downloaded. I want to show them in my project. So if you go back to Notepad, we have a placeholder on the home screen for a picture. I want to replace that with one of the pictures I just downloaded. Uh, so I can scroll around and maybe find the right line, but let's get used to also using the simple but powerful feature of search. So up on, the, up on Notepad, we've got the, uh, the search menu and find, which is just Control F, which, you'll, which you should know from pretty much every other so software. Control F should always bring up the find or search. And again, you may know which line it is, you may scroll around and find it, but what if you've got a thousand lines of code? This is where search comes in. Click Find, and we want to jump to the particular line where we're going to edit this image. So what are we looking for here? We're looking for the place in the code for me to add an image. And I, ha I know that the way that works is I have an image tag. So notice how I wrote it. I didn't close the image tag because it might not find that. I'm going to search for the starting point here because we know that an image tag has the angle bracket image and then source most likely and then maybe other properties. So this is enough, I think, for me to find what I'm looking for. I don't have very many images in my project yet. So I'm going to just type in that much, angle bracket image, and then find next, and it jumped me over to line 58 and that's where I need to replace that. So this was an easy search, but if I, I had if I had 20 images and I wanted to find that one particular image, it might not take me right to the place that I need to, although then I could find next and next and next. Or I can make my search term even more precise. Maybe I had an ID or a class attached to the image. I can search that way. But we haven't quite talked about that yet. Question here? Question? No? Okay. Um, so search is going to be very useful a little bit later once our project gets more complex. But in my case, I found my image tag in line 58, and I'm going to replace that with one of the images that I downloaded. This is where you will need to then check what is the file name 
of the images you downloaded. I've got one called library dash with a bunch of numbers. So I'm going to need to edit my line 58 for it to say source equals and the name of that picture. So source equals and the name of that picture. Oh, and then also, well, if we have simply the name of the picture, that's only halfway there because we put the picture in a folder, didn't we? So we need to specify in the images folder you will find this picture. So the source is actually the name of the folder, images, slash, and then your picture. Yeah. So if, we, if you saved your pictures in the images folder, as I did, I was forgetting, I need to then write the source of the picture is in the images folder, slash, and then the name of the picture. picture gets put into my screen, but I didn't set any other properties and such, so mine looks really weird. I'll deal with that in a moment. But at least my picture's showing up. Now the reason it looks weird is because it's got some built-in style right here. CSS. Some CSS was written for us, and actually I think it's pretty bad. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove that. We're going to define our own style in a more efficient way because this particular picture has some CSS attached to it inline, which is not the most efficient way to do things. Let's say I've got seven more pictures. I don't want to go to each of those seven lines and, and on each of them change the CSS. I want to edit more globally the CSS. So remove that whole line that says style equals all of that. So that it just simply says image, the source, the alt text, which I'll explain what that is, and no style. Question? You mentioned that you're having the CSS inline, is that what yeah, like I was saying that, let's say I've got seven copies of the pictures. If each one says style equals background color red, and then I need to, the boss says, make those backgrounds pink, I would need to go into each of them. So it's going to be more efficient, as we're going to do in just a moment, to use IDs or classes, better yet classes, and then edit them globally. Question? How to take the picture go to the... Okay, um, let me help you one moment. So, uh, what you're talking about, if you had lots of pictures, you would go to each image tag and take out the style. If you, and then, so how would you do that? The reason that this image has style is because Kodika put it for us. Okay, but Normally, if we're writing our image tag ourselves, I wouldn't put style. Okay, you just leave it for a global Yes. Tag. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, so we've got image, just image, and then something that says alt, and then if now if I run it, there's my picture. It's still way too big. That's where CSS will come in in just a moment. We'll do one more thing. We'll take a break to make sure we're all on track. Uh, let me mention the alt text. Uh, alt text is for uh, accessibility compliance. Alt text is for people that need uh, the computer to read them the web page because a computer would not know what's in this picture. If we write one simple sentence in the alt tag or the alt property here, a person that is blind could still know what that picture is because the computer will read to them what's in the alt property. So here I'm just going to write a library. 
as an app later on, this doesn't have that much use, unfortunately, but as a web app, it has a lot of use. And actually, if you want to make a standards compliant website, any picture that you add should have an alt property. It should have a simple sentence, a word or two that explains what the picture is. Because there's no computer smart enough that will tell you, even, even Google servers that are a city block large, it's still not smart enough to tell you really what's in a picture. It might be able to tell you it's a building and there's people perhaps, but it would never know that this is Uncle John right here and his child. So that's what the alt text is for, to explain what the picture is to the people that need that, people that are blind, for example. We're going to take a break, and when we come back, we're going to deal with this picture is way too big. We're going to edit it with CSS. We're going to do things the better way about adding CSS in our CSS file to be able to customize our app. So if this worked at this point, great. Let's take a break. It's 7.07. We'll be back at 7.17. If you need some help, call me over and we'll go on.